This product orientation video only covers the standard A284 series MPR080-100VG models. If your truck is equipped with any options, please contact your Yale dealer for more information. The enclosed end rider lift trucks are rated at 3,629 kilograms or 8,000 pounds and 4,536 kilograms or 10,000 pounds. These lift trucks have a 24 volt AC traction system and a 24 volt DC lift system. An electric traction motor supplies forward and reverse travel. The control handle has the following functions, braking, direction speed control, lifting, lowering, and horn operation. Optional equipment can be installed per customer request to change some operating characteristics to meet unique application needs. The operating manual is in a container on the drive frame. This is a permanent reference and must be available for use at all times. The nameplate for the lift truck is found on the drive frame console. The capacity is the maximum load that the lift truck can handle for the load condition shown on the nameplate and is specified in kilograms and pounds. The lift truck serial number is located on the nameplate and is stamped on the lift truck frame as well. An 11 and a half inch step height allows the operator to access the operator compartment with a thick cushioned rubber floor mat, providing superior comfort. A half inch lip around the perimeter of the floor aids in keeping the left foot inside the operator compartment. Enclosed and rider trucks feature a side stance operator's compartment. A multi-function control handle controls directional speed, lift lower, and horn functions. The padded side stance operator's compartment features a thick adjustable armrest, back and hip pads, and high back support, providing superior comfort for operators and increasing productivity by aiding in reducing fatigue. Optional knee pads are also available. The operator stands parallel to the travel direction. The compartment floor is suspended by four elastomeric mounts to cushion the ride and provide comfort. Enclosed end rider trucks come standard with a beverage holder in the console and multiple storage compartments for pens, markers, tape, pick tickets, and tape measures. The direction speed control assembly has three separate functions, traveling, lifting, and lowering. The control is spring-loaded to return to the neutral position. The operator controls direction and travel speed by pushing the handle in the desired forward or reverse direction. Maximum movement of the handle causes maximum acceleration and travel speed. The amount of movement of the handle in either forward or reverse direction controls the rate of truck acceleration. The farther away from neutral the handle is moved, the faster the rate of acceleration. To change directions, the operator pushes the handle in the opposite direction regardless of travel speed. The lift truck will come to a stop, plugging, and then accelerate in the opposite direction unless the handle is released to return to the neutral position. Push either of the red buttons to sound the horn. The panel display on the enclosed end rider features a graphic LCD display with backlighting, four operator selectable programmable performance modes, and five LED status indicators with a beeper for warnings. A total of up to four lines with 16 characters of text can be shown on the LCD. The five LED status lights include the following a caution icon, which indicates items such as calibration, incomplete checklists, and maintenance reminders. The operator presence icon indicates that the foot switch is not depressed or if the park brake is applied. A thermometer icon alerts you if the motor or motor controller is not within pre-programmed limits. A wrench icon is displayed if there is an active fault, and a battery icon appears when the battery is more than 90% discharged or if the truck enters lift interrupt. For extra security, up to 100 unique five-digit passwords for operators, supervisors, and service technicians can be stored within the system, limiting truck access to authorized train personnel. The enclosed end rider also has counters for traction, lift, and total truck hours. When approximately 25% battery charge remains, the last two bars flash. At 10% charge, the battery LED illuminates and the truck enters lift interrupt. To start the truck, turn the key switch from the off position to the on position. Verify the emergency power disconnect button is disengaged by twisting and pulling the red knob up if the unit will not start. 
There are five SRO, static return to off faults, that can occur during truck startup. The truck display informs the operator of these faults. To resolve them, do the following. Number one, control handle. This occurs if the control handle is not in the neutral position when the key is turned. Return the handle to the neutral position to correct the fault. Number two, cycle left leg. This occurs if your leg sensor beam is broken after key on. Move your left leg to connect the beam and then put your left leg in position to break the beam. You will hear a beep. Number three, position right leg. This occurs if the right leg sensor beam is broken after key on. Move your right leg to connect the beam and then put your right leg in position to break the beam. You will hear a beep. Number four, cycle egress curtain. This occurs if the egress curtain sensor beam has not been broken after key on. Move your left leg to break the beam and then put your left leg in position to reconnect the beam. You will hear a beep. Number five, cycle brake. This occurs if the brake has not been depressed after key on. Depress the brake after key on. You will hear a beep. Once all of the start sequence has been met, the horn will sound twice and the truck is operational. There are three primary methods to stop the unit. When the multifunction control handle or MFC handle is returned to the neutral position from a travel direction, the truck will automatically apply regenerative braking to gradually slow the truck to a stop. For more aggressive braking, move the MFC handle from one travel direction towards the opposite travel direction. The amount of regenerative braking applied is proportional according to how far you move the MFC handle away from neutral. The farther away from neutral you move the handle, the more aggressive the braking action becomes. The operator can also step on the floor switch to stop the unit quickly. This disables travel, applies regenerative braking, and then applies the mechanical park brake. In an emergency, the unit can also be stopped by pressing the quick power disconnect switch. This is not a recommended method of stopping the truck in normal operation, however, as this immediately applies the park brake and may lead to a jerking event and potentially result in premature wear and damage to the park brake. The steering disc is located inside the operator compartment and is composed of an electronic sensor and disc-shaped actuator assembly with handle. The center of rotation of the disc can be adjusted by the operator. To adjust, pull up and hold the small knob at the edge of the disc. Rotate the handle to the desired position and let the knob return to position to lock the steering disc in place. The steering disc controls the position of the drive tire to turn the lift truck. Two different steering configurations are available. Automotive steering turns the lift truck in the direction the steer disc is turned when moving in the direction of the forks trailing. Reverse steering turns the lift truck in the opposite direction of the steer disc when moving in the direction of the forks trailing. The control handle has a yellow knob that operates the lift and lower functions. When the knob is pushed up and held, the forks will lift. When the switch is down and held, the forks will lower. The amount of the rotation of the knob controls the rate of lift or lower. The lift truck battery can be removed from either side of the lift truck. A roller rack under the battery permits easy battery movement. The battery must have spacers installed to prevent more than 13 millimeters or 0.5 inches of horizontal movement of the battery. The battery restraint panels must be in place before operating the lift truck. The battery can be left in the lift truck for charging as well, with the open battery compartment sides. If removing the battery from the unit, we recommend having the proper equipment and training available. Enclosed and rider accessories include operator password start interlock, multifunctional dash display, stretch film roll holder, multi-purpose bar above motor cover, convenience tray, trash bin under the operator backrest, reverse activated audible alarm, DC to DC converter, coasting function, LED work lights with auto on function. Standard operator protection features include the industry-exclusive and patented operator sensing system and pedal-free design 
which provides freedom to adjust stance during operation and reinforces operator training for the operator to keep feet inside the compartment during operation. The operator does not have to stand on pedals for truck operation and a raised lip around the outer perimeter of the floor mat area, which serves as an additional reminder in keeping feet within the operator compartment. Additionally, there is a horn to alert other trucks and pedestrians of the truck's presence, 